we have another photo here and we are going to talk about two things here. We're going to talk really about editing color with duotones and also color transitions or filters. So one thing we want to do is we want to talk about duotones first. So let's take this really bright colorful photo and let's really hone in on just a couple of ink colors. And so you'll see this effect everywhere kind of done on posters and pop art and we're going to kind of produce our own kind of pop art style using duotones. So let's go ahead and unlock our layer here and we are going to go up to image mode and of course we could change all these. So you'll notice duotone is grayed out. I cannot select duo, duotone and there's a reason for that. We need to be able to strip all the color away from the photo first. So we're going to convert this photo to grayscale. We're going to go ahead and discard. So now we have an instant black and white photo. Let's go back to image mode and now all of a sudden duotone is a selected option. So let's select duotone and this is where we can do more than just one ink color. So this is just the only ink colors that show up on this photo are these colors and that's it. So uh, we can also do a monotone and just have one color and kind of bring in just one color here so we can almost do a grayscale but with a hint of different color. So that can have a really cool modern effect, especially when you do more washed out lighter colors. So that could be really good for a background for a design. So that is monotone and duotone will do two different ink colors. So you can pair maybe a lighter color with a darker shade to kind of bring in more of those shadows. Kind of makes it a little more complex. And to add even more complexity, you can even do a tritone and add three different colors. But let's stick with duotone for now and let's try to do something dramatic. So we already have kind of a cool color. Let's see what happens when we try to bring out a warm color as well. So we're going to stick with two very similar cool colors. We have to title these, so just one and two. And let's go ahead and click on OK. So we kind of have our before, kind of full color. We have kind of a very interesting piece when we kind of strip it down and make it a duotone. So let's try that duotone effect one more time on a new photo. And remember, you can have access to these photos by visiting the, the resource guide and being able to find the photos there or just going to pexels.com and finding your own photo to use. So let's go to image, let's strip out all the color and make it a grayscale. And then let's go ahead and add our duotone. And this can really add kind of a neat pop. So I'm just doing a very dark, rich blue paired with maybe a lighter blue. Kind of see what happens. You kind of see kind of it totally changes the entire mood and tone of the photo. So if we go back to history and we go before, that was before it looked great and I love full color, but this just adds a really neat effect that you can overlay type on top of it and create a really neat poster out of this. And what duotones and, and monotones do is when you strip all those hundreds of colors out of there and you simplify it and just make one or two inks, it really helps the background be a, it really helps the photo become a great background because the background's not has all these rich colors. It just has very simple colors and you're able to overlay type on top of it uh, and the type can really stand out on top of the photo. So it could be a very helpful tool for graphic designers. Let's take the same photo of the woman and start over and this time we're going to do something different. We're going to do color transitions or basically color gradients and we're going to overlay that gradient to create a really cool effect with blending modes. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our gradient tool. So we're going to go ahead and hold down on the paint bucket tool and you'll be able to find it as a drop down menu option. So gradient tool and we are going to add a very basic gradient. Let's just start with kind of an orange gradient and this is just the default gradients that come with it. You can always double click the gradient to be able to, to change and manipulate the gradient as much as you want. You can add many points of color and double click on this little area to add as much color or as little color as you want. So just kind of double clicking on these and adding various tones of red and orange. And you can move these around. You could change the density between each one and make it tighter transition or a looser transition. 
So you can click on OK. You can load lots of different basic ones. The newer version of Photoshop really has some really neat, uh, another benefit to having the newer version. It has some really neat default gradients built in. This is brand new to 2020 version of Adobe Photoshop. You can add in some really neat default gradients. These are not available in some of the older versions of Photoshop. You just have to manually create them. But you have pinks, you have all sorts of different colors. So I'm just going to pick one I think would be really dynamic. So let's pick, uh, pick something pretty deep. So I'm picking this kind of pink to purple. And I click on OK and we're going to go ahead and draw a gradient. I'm just going to click and drag. And so the shorter you do a gradient, the quicker the tr transition of the gradient. And I'm going to do one thing before I draw the gradient. I'm going to go to my Layers panel, and I'm not going to do a gradient on top of the photo because if I did that, the photo's gone. What I want to do is I want to add a new layer on top. And this will be our gradient layer. That's our gradient layer. I'm going to click and drag on a new layer and do a gradient. So if I do a very short line, it's a very tight. If I do a very lengthy line, it's going to get longer. Of course, you have different ones you could do. You can do radial. I'm right up here in your... Uh, gradient selection area. We could do a radial, which is going to be a circle. We can do kind of a diamond pattern. There's a lot of different things we can do. Let's stick to a radial. Let's have this be kind of a radial gradient. So you kind of start at the top and it radiates into a circle-like fashion. So here's where kind of the magic happens. So for right now, I have the gradient as the topmost layer. Let's go ahead and bring this up. I'm going to do what's called blending modes, and blending modes are always found in your layers panel on all Adobe products that we'll be using in this class, and right now it's set to normal. But there's a drop-down box, and it'll do a live preview and show you how uh, some of these different blending modes will affect the image. Um, so this is basically different ways that it lets pixels or light through the layer. So right now with screen, it's going to let specific pixels through this layer and reveal the layer underneath. And that's why all of these are a little bit different because it, the rules of which pixels it allows through are different with each one of these. So if I do screen, you can see how this looks very much like an, a very popular filter you would see on social media or Instagram. This is exactly how filters work in social media as they basically add kind of a gradient or color, two-toned color on top of a photo, and then they just do blending modes to let certain lights through so you can reveal the image underneath, but still keep that color layer intact. So right now I'm using screen, but we can try out other ones. I really think screen or linear dodge works really well. Uh, the overlay has kind of uh, lets more of the darker shadows through and exclusion. Ooh, look at that. So you're kind of getting some greens in there. So all these are going to have different effects. That could have a different effect that you're going for, but let's go ahead and stick with screen. You can uh, have the gradient layer on top. You can also, for a different effect, you can let the photo be on top. So let's put the photo on top just to kind of see what happens here. And let's take our gradient layer and put it back to normal. And let's put our blending mode on the top layer and see how this changes things. So you'll notice how everything seems to come out a little darker with this one when the photo is on top. Traditionally, you see the uh, photo on the bottom. You can do it either way. It's going to be a little bit different sometimes, but normally you'll see the gradient or the filter on the top over the photo with the blending mode. So just that's just kind of traditionally how you kind of see it done. What's great about this is I can add any gradient on top and it'll change it dynamically. So let's pick a different kind of, of uh, gradient here. Let's do, let's do something very vibrant. So just picking this tri-colored, you can double click this little tri-colored gradient here and just gonna click and hold on the gradient layer. And it's gonna keep that blending mode on always. So it's just gonna change the colors that it filters through. Uh, we can also double click our gradient here. We can change one single color if we wanted to. So really the possibilities are endless with what you can create with this. Let's do one more. Let's try a blue, just for the heck of it. Click and hold, and I have a radial gradient going on. So that's interesting. Let's do kind of a tighter gradient. 
And let's go ahead and do our drop down options and kind of scroll through some of these. So hard light, that would make a really great background image because it's so soft. It's not so harsh. So there you have it. We can go back into history and find the one that we think was the coolest one. You can do the same thing when we get to brushes. You can brush on a specific color and I'll show you really quickly here. I'm going to go ahead and take off this gradient right now and we could do the same thing with brushes and we'll do that next. So I have our gradient layer just toggled off. We're going to do a new layer and this is going to be our brush layer. So we haven't done brushes yet, but we'll definitely use those throughout the course. So I'm just selecting our brush tool over here in the toolbar. And we are going to get, they have two main ones here in general brushes. There's a soft round, which is feathered, and there's a hard round, which is harsh. We're going to choose a soft round brush and make it pretty big in size. So pretty much maxing it out at 5,000 pixels for this particular photo. What we're going to do is we are going to pick, let's do something dramatic like pink so we can really see this in action. We have pink selected. We have our brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select a blending mode here. We're going to go ahead and select the overlay blending mode. Of course, you can use any one you want. But this is just an empty layer, and we're going to brush on pink. So you can see how you can add little pops of color on one particular side of her face. And what's great about this is I can toggle this off anytime I want. I could take the eraser tool right here, make that really big and make that soft round. Take the eraser tool and kind of shave off where the pink comes in. And then I can add what I like to do is I like to layer it as much as I can. So I'm going to add a new layer. And let's do kind of a purple color. And this will be purple. We're going to get the brush tool, and I'm just going to do the other side of her face. So why don't we zoom in on this? And I'm going to do the other side of her face. So I just clicked once and make sure our overlay blending mode is on. So you can kind of see, and we can even reduce our brush, brush size a little bit. You can see how kind of you can create some pretty cool effects by kind of brushing on blending mode so you don't always have, just have to do a gradient. And I do this a lot in my Photoshop editing and manipulation class. I go a little more in depth on all this kind of stuff. But for this class, we just need to kind of cover the basics. I always just bring in orange, having lots of pops here. You can even do a new layer on top and reduce the opacity here. You just get a little hint of orange and then change the blending mode. So there's there's a lot of things you can do uh, with this particular effect. Uh, this is kind of what the effect I was trying to do very quickly and you can kind of see the final. This is just creating different uh, layers and adding uh, different brushes and, and doing the blending modes on those brushes. So now that we've reviewed some of the photo editing basics, we're now ready to move on to the next project.